Hello everyone, my name is Genel Morvan. I'm an application engineer at Anthropology. And today we are going to talk about uh, lattices, uh, mostly applied for SLA, NDLP, uh, and all of the resin process. So a DFAM approach to uh, resin-based printing. So today I'm going to, uh, to showcase a bit of a different file than usual. And we are going to do a bit of outdoor activity with this uh, climbing harness. And we're going to create some lattices on this climbing harness uh, that are fully conformal to, um, to, the, to the harness. And after that, we are going to make sure that these lattices are actually printable on a resin-based printer. So first of all, all the credits uh, for the climbing, uh, the climbing harness file goes to, uh, to Ahmad Junaid uh, on Sketchfab that uh, created this file. And I'm going to, uh, to use it today to uh, showcase you some uh, anthropology functionalities. So let's uh, have a look to, uh, to the harness itself and how we can, uh, first of all, create some, uh, some lattices on that. So the idea is to, to create lattices here is, for example, we can use a cell, uh, cell map on quad mesh. And by creating this cell map, we can, uh, after that, use a unit cell to, uh, to actually uh, make uh, our lattice on, uh, on this cell map. And when we have this lattice, it's quite easy after that to, uh, uh, to change the, the unit cell. So for example, if I want to go to fluoride, or if I want to use some isotrust, et cetera. It's actually interesting because when we uh, change the unit cell, this already has an impact on how it's going to be printed. So for example, for SLA and DLP, uh, what is interesting is of course the beam thickness that we're going to use. So this is defined in, uh, in your block, but also what's interesting is that you always want to uh, keep uh, the bridging as low as possible. Uh, this is mostly defined by your, uh, by your printer manufacturer and the resin that we're going to use. But uh, also you want to avoid as much as possible over rain. And if you have over rain, let's say that you want them at 45 degrees and maybe not more. So in this case, for example, if I use Kelvin cell, here we see that we have pretty low bridging and quite good over rain, uh, mostly 45 degrees. And that will be definitely um, a friendly uh, lattice to, uh, to print on a resin-based printer. So that's the first thing. Here we did for the waist, but we can of course do it for the legs. And yeah, that's uh, that. That would be quite uh, quite easy to do using this uh, cell map on uh, on quad mesh. Maybe you're gonna ask me like, but why why are we doing that? So I mean, in climbing, in sport climbing, it's quite important when you to have like a shock absorption. And in that case, maybe you would like uh, you would like a good lattice to have actually shock absorption. It might be also more comfortable for for the youth, for the harness user. And uh, finally, will increase of course the airflow uh, of the of the climbing harness uh, along the skin. So this might be interesting for very hot days uh, when people are going uh, going outdoor. But let's. See now another technique of how to create lattices. So we saw like how to create lattice, how to use a unit cell and uh, have a quad mesh uh, on, uh, on, this, on this part to have a conformal lattice. But now let's have a look if we can maybe use Voronoi lattice. Why Voronoi lattice? Voronoi lattice can be very interesting in a resin-based printing because you have, of course, like a lot of control actually on Voronoi lattices, even though uh, they might be sometime uh, non-uniform and a bit, uh, bit. We we can get some 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 crazy thing happening, but in general, there are you 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 can you can change some some parameters that will help you to actually print this uh, this part, and also pretty cool looking. So let's have a look at this uh, this Voronoi lattice here that I created. In this case, we see that this is pretty pretty simple Voronoi that I created, and in this Voronoi, we see that I change uh, the point spacing at the on the external diameter of uh, of this part and uh, here we have a bigger point spacing on the internal diameter and this is could be interesting as i said before like when you do sport climbing maybe you want to have like a good shock absorption when you fall so you're gonna fall a few meters and when you fall uh, you might want this lattice to actually absorb your shock even though rope are dynamic today and they already absorb quite some uh, the harness does a lot too 
So in this case, what you uh, what we see is that this lattice might not be the the most most friendly um, free, uh, most friendly resin based uh, printing. So we see that we have a lot of bridging, a lot of overhang, and we don't really have actually control on this uh, on this volume. So, but, so I will come back to that later, and we see like how to get uh, to get actually control on the volume lattice. But another thing is that we might not be able to actually print this part. You see that this part is actually pretty big. And even though I use here, like for example, a REM block to get it feeder here, the, the, the overall diameter of this part is, uh, is around 400, uh, 400 millimeter, which is maybe too big for your, uh, for your printer. So what you could do is, for example, use um, use different parts, and by using uh, by using multiple parts, you could even like stack them together in one one print job and get them all at once uh, in your um, in your printer. So that might be a, a good idea, and so it's also more realistic uh, knowing that the, the harness is actually open here uh, to be able to um, to get in get it on. So, uh, so, so it might be actually better to uh, to print this uh, separately and get get something uh, and and get uh, and then use uh, use all these uh, this part together on the harness. So, if we now have a look at how to create like a more uniform lattice, so let's say a lattice that is going to be more printer friendly, so for SLA or DLP technology. So if I have a look at that, we can see that I created here a, a lattice that is complete, like it's all, almost resembled to, almost looks like a hexagonal lattice, but still is a Voronoi. And I still have my point spacing, which is uh, lower on the external diameter and higher on the internal diameter. That might improve the shock absorption once again. But as we said, we want maybe to have them split. So here I have it. Uh, I have it split in this case. And if we uh, if we have a look at at this part, we see that now we actually get from uh, from this non-uniform lattice. Now we have a uniform lattice, and we have a lot of more control on the overhang angle. So you see that most of it. I'm not saying all, but most of the of the angle are actually uh, 45 degrees. And the bridging is actually defined by all by your uh, special weighting, which is the 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 distance between uh, two center of each Voronoi. We can of course define a beam thickness, and here you will see that uh, in in this case I, I use like different spe uh, special weighting depending on if I'm on the outer diameter or on the inner diameter of this uh, of this body. After that, we are going maybe to focus on only one of them, so we can see like a, a bit better in detail what we can do with uh, with this part. But here we see really well like the different uh, spatial weighting, and here we see that I have a spatial weighting of two millimeter compared to here where I have a spatial weighting of seven millimeter, and you see the different size of the cell in each uh, in each case. When you have this part, what you will want to do is of course you will want to print it. And when you want to print it, you can use uh, export to FreeMF. So first of all, you need to mesh to mesh this part. Uh, this is the part which is mesh. If I completely zoom in, we see like um, we see the, the wireframe of, uh, of of my mesh. And after meshing this part, what you can do is export it as a FreeMF file. If you have a, a software that can also um, read some uh, lattice uh, lattice file, you can you can use that, or you could even slice your body to a black and white image stack, which can be uh, read by most of the um, print um, print sli uh, slicer software out there, um, mostly applied to uh, to DLP printing in that sense. So. When you're happy with uh, with your parts, you have been printing it. Actually, we printed that part ourselves, and we got it first time right by using uh, by using this design for additive manufacturing approach. And when you get that, whether you you finish and you print all of them, and you can you can stack them to uh, to your climbing harness, or you could also use a bit more for print 
uh, print preparation. And for example, uh, take like a user view plane as, a, as, a, as the base of your printer and also define like, for example, some points on, uh, on this part that will be uh, that will be the support. How did we define these points? We use actually uh, a body to uh, to get this uh, this and a body and then some random points in uh, in this body to actually get these points. And after getting these points, you can use them to uh, create some uh, some support structure that you could also slice together with your part and use them as a uh, a support structure in your print. So you could take all advantages of uh, end topology print preparation in that sense. So this is it for, for this part. So what we saw today was how to, we could like get this, uh, this climbing harness and how we could create some lattices on this, uh, on this part. And quite uh, interestingly, how to uh, to to uh, to print them in a way that you are of course getting like a first time right prints and how you can uh, you can change uh, different parameter to actually reduce the bridging reduce the overing etc so a really good design for additive manufacturing approach uh, for resin based printer and applied on uh, lattices thank you very much and have a good day everyone if you want to download this entire file, go to entopology.com under resources, videos, find this video, and at the bottom, click the link to download the Entop file. If you want to learn more about Entopology, contact us and fill out this form to speak with an Entop expert. Lastly, check out our support page at support.entopology.com and type your questions in the search bar if you have any questions. Thank you.